I always tell people that I don't want to wear my seatbelt because then I wouldn't get as many comments from people telling me to wear my seatbelt. So now that I'm wearing my seatbelt, I need you to make a comment in congratulatory text for this occasion. Y'all ready to get Liddy in here? The Internet of Things is not real. Yet. It's not Internet of Things, it's Internet of fucking cloud services and subscriptions and dependents. Let me, let me explain. You might have something like this. You may have purchased one of these Wi-Fi outlets. You may have installed a smart switch to replace one of your, you know, up and downy switches in your house that you control it with your Google or your Alexa. Or you might have a Nest thermostat or one of those doorbells with the camera in it, all that good shit. Yeah, so that's great. That's fine and dandy. I do too. And, you know, that works great when you want to turn things off and on with your voice or set a schedule or whatever the fuck. But can you go to your computer and type a command line to turn your lights on without using someone else's app or having an internet connection? Can you automate the things in your house if your internet isn't available? Can you make use of Wi-Fi smart switches and smart outlets if you don't want to create an account on the interwebs with some third-party company that might not exist for as long as you want to use this device. If you buy one of these things, here's what happens. Every manufacturer of these licenses a set of software. So when you get this, there's instructions that tell you to download an app. And you'll quickly find out that if you buy these from a bunch of different vendors, every vendor has their own app and they all look identical because it is the same software. You have to create an account on the vendor's app, usually with your email address or phone number, which goes into the cloud, the internet. You can't do this offline. And then once you set up your devices to use your Wi-Fi network by updating the credentials stored on here and optionally updating the firmware that's on here, what happens is your account on the back end gets linked to your Google or your Alexa, and these devices show up in what you can control. But what this does not come with is any kind of local software, utilities, or API documentation to turn this on or off, or set this up, or control it, or configure it without using this app, without going to their website, without their company continuing to exist. When I put these in my house, these smart switches, the switches that I took out had been there for 70 years and they were working perfectly fine. I don't think that these will be there for even half of that. Not only is this not made to the same standard as what was there before, but the company's got to exist. Like, in order for this to work, not only does my Google equipment have to connect up to Google, but then Google's got to talk to this manufacturer's API. If this company goes bankrupt, this company goes chapter 11, where they stop supporting the software at some point in the future, well, guess what? All the switches in my house just became a lot less useful. Wouldn't it be great if I could just run software on my computer instead of in Google's cloud that would control the things in my house. That way, in a disaster, I could have a battery backup, and even if I don't have an internet connection or my internet goes out, or if someone's trying to tamper my security system and try to break my house and they cut my internet, like, I can still talk to my devices. Now, it is possible, if you dig up the protocols, it is possible to control these over the LAN using basic protocols, but they're, they're obfuscated, they're not fully documented, and you certainly don't get any of that information when you buy one of these. There is no set this up local mode, offline mode, I, I'm cognizant of my privacy and I don't want a third party seeing what time I turn my bathroom lights on mode. You know, there is no alternative. I mean, there's alternatives, but you gotta fucking dig. And not all of these will do that. Some of these require uh, your packets to be signed with a key that you get from the vendor, which you have to register for with an API key. Why should I have to register for an API key to control a fucking switch that I bought and own and is in my house? It's fucking bullshit. This is not Internet of Things. This is an Internet of Things dependent on the Internet. In my, in my future, in my bright 
future where Internet of Things actually is what it was intended to be, you would get, first of all, there would be a common protocol that all of these devices speaks, not only to be discovered, to be configured, to be controlled, to provide status, but it would, it would be a, a standard. Just like how Bluetooth, controlling your Bluetooth speakers from your phone is a standard, controlling the devices in your house should be a standard. These use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but the protocol that they use is completely fucking arbitrary and not available to the end user or anyone that wants to actually make use of these things. In my future, these devices would be packaged with command line utilities, SDKs, PowerShell modules, uh, coding examples, protocol usage examples, flowcharts. In my future, potentially the operating system would detect and control these devices, just like the operating system shows you your Wi-Fi networks, what's plugged in your USB. It's becoming a bigger issue because of privacy. The more of these that get installed, the more these third parties have potentially data about you. What time you turn your bathroom light on, what time your coffee maker turns on, what time you set things in your house for, when you're there, when you're not there, potentially. There's a lot of premature rush into the cloud. I mean, we haven't really had a major internet disaster yet where the internet just isn't available to the capacity we expect and literally nothing can be done. You know, it used to be, hey, if my internet's down, okay, well, I'll just do something else on my computer, but these days, like, what are you gonna do? Open the control panel? I mean, even fucking Office is online. Can't even open Word. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, mate? In the perfect Internet of Things future, I would be able to watch a movie not only on my one Chromecast, but all my Chromecasts at the same time. There's just absolutely no reason why I can't stream that to any of the TVs in my house. Likewise, I'm extremely disappointed that it is almost 2020 and my operating system, whether that be Windows, Linux, or whatever, out of the box cannot send audio or video to another computer. I cannot set my audio output device to be the speakers on a remote computer. That's really bizarre. I mean, in 1999, we could edit the registry remotely. I could, I could manage all kinds of shit remotely. I can print remotely. I can store files remotely. I should be able to send my audio and my screen to any number of devices in my house at the same time, multiplex, whichever way I want, picture in picture. This is all fucking software based. This is all, this is all shit you do in software. There's no reason why we can't have this. If there's just an open standard, people would be able to develop the most awesome shit with these devices. But there's not. People can't. People can ask Google to turn them off, turn them on, change the color, dim them, maybe set the temperature if it's a thermostat device. All right, so I just moved into a house with a small pool. I wanted to set up a thermometer so that I could figure out what the temperature of the pool was, either from my computer, from my phone, or through Google, or whatever. And I was shocked to find out that there is no easy way to do this. There is no generic sensor. There is no generic IoT sensor device that integrates with this shit that there is, that you can just buy and plug like a, th you know, a tiny thermistor into. It just doesn't exist. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if there's just some obvious product on Amazon that I can just, you know, put in my pool and ask Google what the temperature of my pool is. But no, I mean, the, the only hack that I found was involved making an Arduino, setting it up as a thermostat, and then not using it to control heating or air conditioning, but using it to ask what the temperature in a room was, and then you had to set up a fake room for the pool. This is the whole bunch, it should not be that hard. It should not be that hard. Whether it's my pulse rate, my mother's blood sugar, the temperature of my pool, or whether or not my front door is open, I should not have to work that hard to integrate this shit. There should just be a fucking generic thing. I do not want to be in a position where my doorbell stops working because I stopped paying for a fucking subscription with a company. I want to have a button with an IP address and a, a ding dong and a speaker that plays a ding dong sound that are hooked up together. This does not require a 
subscription. This does not require. Even if I wanted to put a camera there and shoot video and stream that to my phone, why does that require a subscription? I have an internet connection on my phone, I have an internet connection in my house, I have software. Uh, why am I paying a company for this? The, you know, okay, if I want cloud storage, that's one thing, but I don't care about that. Why would I care about that? I want a ding dong. I want a fucking ding dong that works. If I want to kill a process on a computer halfway around the world, you know, every fucking operating system, they got you covered. If I want to print a document to an office in California, well, every platform has got me covered. Ask yourself this, when these companies go out of business, how much of this shit is going to continue to work? You know, even if it works without their involvement, are you going to get software updates that make it continue working with all the custom proprietary Google and Alexa APIs? What if every time you wanted to connect a Bluetooth device to your phone or your car, you had to download an app from that speaker or, or a headset manufacturer? Like, you don't need to be a scrum master to figure out that there's a gap. There's a gap here. Someone fill the gap. The most condescending thing about these apps are that you go to add a device and they show you pages and pages of devices you can add with this app, whether it be teapot or kettle or lawnmower, they have all these ridiculous options, but no matter which, all it does is, is dictate which icon this device has. There's two main routines and most of these apps do both of them. One of them is AP mode where the device broadcasts its own access point and then your phone connects to it uh, and then gives the device your real Wi-Fi configuration. The device restarts, connects to your Wi-Fi, and then they rendezvous, and then it goes to 100%. You can also discover and configure these devices through Bluetooth. A lot of them will do that first because it's faster. And it's painful because at least on Android, the, the app has to prompt you to change your Wi-Fi network. Like, it'll pop up the dialog box, but you still have to be the one to connect to the outlet's fucking Wi-Fi and then connect back, and then you have to type in your Wi-Fi key so that the device has it. And then a lot of these devices don't work on 5.8 gigahertz, so you have to have a second 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi in your house just for your fucking light switches. And then when you have a lot of light switches, you run out of room on your DHCP because if you're anyone other than me, you're probably running a router that has integrated DHCP and it probably only gives out about you know, anywhere from 10 to 100 addresses, so then you gotta expand your DHCP and then you have a really big house with a lot of shit you're an enthusiast, then you're gonna run a space in your subnet, then you either have to change your subnet to a slash 23 or uh, have two subnets, create another router interface, maybe two VLANs, whole fucking mess of nonsense, it should be a standard, it should be a fucking standard, it should be a fucking standard. And then what happens when this shit becomes vulnerable? When it becomes vulnerable, and you can exploit it, and you can turn people's lights on and off and shit, like, what, what, what's gonna happen then? Here's the obligatory part of the video where I scapegoat the YouTube algorithm as a reason for why you need to both click the subscribe button and ring that bell. You also need to degauss your monitor. That's a pretty sharp curve. Mamacita, that is not interstate standards. That is not interstate grade highway. It's not. This is 309 and Tillman Street. Part of the old 309. 309 used to be US 309. Now it is PA 309. And it is a cuck.